So to make the shift in, from a managing hands to a managing minds organization, again, this is a collaboration for everybody. And I think it's, uh, for L&D professionals, I think they need to, uh, to gain the buy-in of everybody in the organization. I often get a question, do we start bottom up or top down? And the answer is yes. <laughs> it's both. Uh, it's getting the support of the CEO and top executives or the founder, the, whoever is, you know, kind of a, the, the leader, top leader of the organization, top leaders of the organization. And it's also working with employees to let them know their role in learning and how they need to take, uh, take action for themselves and be champions for their, for their own learning. And it's, again, it's working with managers and convincing, well, first letting them know about this role that they have in a managing minds organization, about learning in a managing minds organization. And it's really selling. I mean, it's convincing them that, that they have to change and this is where it's going, but together we can do this, the learning professional managers in the organization, and, and doing that together. Um, so there's no easy answer here, but every organization is going to be compelled by all the forces that we've talked about already uh, to make this shift. It's not, you know, are you going to change? It's, you know, how quickly are you going to change? And everybody has to work together to make this happen. What, what would you add to that, David? In the companies that we looked at, I, I saw two effective models for making the shift. The first one is the one you refer to as top-down. What happened would be, say, UK TV again, Darren Childs makes the decision turns the company upside down, but he just doesn't do it helter-skelter. He gets everybody together, he explains why he wants to do it, he explains what he thinks the value is, and the change starts that gets made, gets made from the top down throughout the organization. And everybody from the bottom starts to support it because they understand it. The other model, and you called it the bottom-up model, I think of it as the small success model, okay? And what I noticed is that in some of these, in some of these companies, there might be a team, for example, and the team decides, well, we're gonna to start to work in a way that exemplifies managing minds. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that they have such a tremendous success at what they're doing on their project that other managers who are in the old model look at them and say, they did great. How did they do that? What was their secret sauce? And then they explain it, and then it starts to spread out, and then gradually the company gets an idea that there's a better way to operate, there's a better way to function, there's a better way to, to learn and to manage. And so it starts to bubble up and out through the organization and that becomes another effective way to make the change happen. Yeah. But we're, what we're saying is, this is not easy, folks. This is not something that's gonna happen overnight. It's, and none of the companies we studied have a cookie cutter approach to doing this. There is no one size fits all. And all of them stumbled. That's the wonderful thing about this model. As you're learning to do it, you're going to fail. And from that failure, you're going to get better and learn how to succeed. But you can't be afraid to take the risk. And it's the risk takers, either at the smaller level of the organization or at the top of the organization, who are the ones that start to implement this change because they know they have to make it happen. Mm -hmm.